You, Norm, had wanted to discuss Malcolm Shaw, the, the British lawyer who represented Israel. And so let's take a look at Malcolm Shaw, who had this viral moment uh, in, in which he, he became a bit of a detective. The court was prepared to consider not only the question, question of the plausibility of rights, Some has shuffled my papers. But also the uh, question of the possible breach of such rights. I'm not a believer. My parents were resolute atheists, and it would be a betrayal of their memory where I'd become a believer. But at that particular moment, I did think there was some divine intervention um, to rattle Mr. Shaw. Um, I find him a particularly revolting character. He has the moral stature of something across between a used car salesman and a personal injury lawyer. He's Israel's, basically Israel's official lawyer. In his first statement, he had to deal with, number one, is this a dispute between Israel and South Africa? Is there a dispute? And he used all these technical arguments to prove it doesn't qualify as a dispute. Now, I recognize in law, there are all these technicalities, which to some extent fly in the face of what common sense tells you. But there has to be some connection. Whatever legal technicality there is, there has to be some connection with a word as everybody understands its meaning. South Africa says Israel is committing genocide. Israel says it's not committing genocide. I think any reasonable person has to conclude there is a dispute here. Especially right. when Israel is denouncing South Africa as Hamas is the legal right. arm of Hamas. Well, they also said, Israel said that South Africa is complicitous in genocide because one of the um, one of the um, grounds for indictment of a genocide is if you are complicit, you know, complicit in genocide. So they said because South Africa hosts Hamas, South Africa has good diplomatic relations with Hamas. They say South Africa is a party to genocide. Now. How in God's name can there possibly be any doubt that a dispute exists? So along comes Malcolm Shaw, and he says, South Africa never told us that they disagree with us about genocide. He says, there is not a dispute, there is a unispute. There's not a dispute. There's a, you know, okay, I would say too clever by half. One side says there's a genocide going on. Israel is committing it. The other side says there's no genocide going on. We're not committing anything. So how in the face of common sense, you can come before the court and say, you know what he, Malcolm Shaw says? He says, South Africa didn't give us a chance to sit down and negotiate, and maybe we could have come to an agreement on this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we're talking about alimony. It was mass murder, we've agreed, but not genocide. <laughs> not halfway. <laughs> you know, yeah, the Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, the the write-up in the um in the intercept makes the point that 
is, is summarizes it the way you did and then makes the point that after uh, South Africa publicly accused Israel of genocide in November and called for the ICC to issue a warrant for Netanyahu's arrest, Israel responded by withdrawing its ambassador to South Africa, which, which somewhat undermines the idea that it was willing to engage in any kind of diplomacy or negotiation around that what exactly was going on in Gaza. <laughs> but according to Shaw, it's just a minor squabble or misunderstanding and if we had gotten together for latte, it probably could have been ironed for lot, out. For latkes. Right. And then he says, ah, but now we'll never know. No, I think we know. We know there wasn't going to be a squaring of the circle on this particular issue. And then the second point that he had to deal with was the question, is there, is there an intent to commit genocide? And basically what Shaw argues is this. He says, Israel's only aim is to get the hostages back and to dismantle Hamas. He then says, step two, all those statements that we all now know by Netanyahu and Amalek, by the defense minister and no uh, food, water, electricity and fuel, all those statements, he dismisses them as, quote, a few random statements. And he says, what we have to look at is the operational orders by the Ministry of Security Affairs and by the War Cabinet. You have to look at the orders. And all the orders are very proper. You have to obey international humanitarian law. You have to be proportionate. You can't target civilians. All the orders are very proper. And then the next step in his argument is to say, that's exactly what Israel's been doing. It's been absolutely faithful to the principles of proportionality, what's called distinction and discrimination. Uh, and then he says that They've also been very cooperative on the issue of bringing in humanitarian relief. Where, whereas, what's the South African argument? The South African argument is, let's look at those few random statements. They're genocidal. Let's look at the actual practice on the ground. And then come the hundreds of citations that Israel is not being proportionate. It's not being discriminate. It's not um, uh, proportionate, and it's targeting civilians. And they say that what's actually happening on the ground coheres with the statements, those few random statements. They're committing genocide. And then the last part is to say the humanitarian relief is trivial next to what needs to be done. And so in my opinion, the Israeli case completely falls apart when you look at what's actually happening. When you look at what's actually happening, they're not targeting Hamas. That's not true. Now, you might say I'm exaggerating here when I say they're not targeting Hamas. In fact, they're not. It's just hit or miss. When you are bombing indiscriminately, when you are carpet bombing, you're hoping one of your bombs will draw, drop on a tunnel. But you're not actually targeting the tunnel. That's what it means to bomb indiscriminately. You're not targeting anything. So I, I will, of course, acknowledge they want to dismantle Hamas or defeat it or destroy it. I have no doubt about that. But their modus operandi, how they're going about doing it, is by simply indiscriminately bombing everything, flattening everything. And then in the northern sector, after you've flattened everything, almost literally, there are many towns which are gone, like Beit Lahia, Beit Hanun. Apparently, there's nothing there anymore. And then they come in for the ground operation when they allegedly are looking for the tunnels. But that's not the, what they're doing. That's why 
From the beginning, Israel won the propaganda war from day one when it was described as an Israel-Hamas war. Right. That, was, that was the terminology that was immediately adopted by everyone. That's not true. It's an Israel-Gaza war. They are targeting the civilian population. And as a afterthought, if we happen to get Hamas, you know, this carpet bombing, terrific. But that's not what was happening. John Finer, National Security Advisor John Finer, during one of his appearances on the Sunday morning shows this weekend, said something about <laughs> how Israel is beginning the shift to targeting more high value Hamas targets. Uh, we have seen uh, in, in recent days and weeks uh, a, a beginning of a shift in, the, in a phase of the conflict that we have been calling for, uh, where we would like Israel to focus more on high value targets, on Hamas uh, leadership. Uh, and we have seen them start to do that. We Which, as Aaron pointed out, was kind of a confession that up until now they haven't been targeting them. They're just starting to. It's just yeah. been the wholesale mass slaughter up until now. Yeah. Yeah, I think, in fact, um, uh, in my view, that was the strongest part of um, the South African presentation because genocide is primarily or crucially about intent. Um, in, in, in theory, you, you know, Israel can kill as, as, as many people as it wants, but unless it can be demonstrated, that there was genocidal intent to those actions, it can't be guilty of genocide. And for the um, South African legal team, first, um, uh, Adil Hassim, I thought, made a very powerful uh, presentation showing the genocidal nature of Israel's campaign. And then uh, Tembeka, uh, Tembeka Nguka, Nguka Etob, did I thought the crucial presentation on intent where he just overwhelmed us with statement after statement after statement from Israeli leaders, uh, from decision makers, prominent members of civil society, journalists, all the rest of it. And even more importantly, then drew a very persuasive link of how these statements were translated into action on the ground uh, by by the foot soldiers, uh, so to speak. 